Hi there. Today I want to talk to you about the Unatec 3.0 pen plotter. So right off the bat, I want to say this is a review unit. Just like my company that I say sometimes sends people keyboards to review, Unatec sent me this unit to review. I did buy the previous model, the 2.0, but uh, when I expressed an interest in the 3.0, they sent me a unit to review. They didn't ask to see the video beforehand, before I publish it, and they didn't ask to know what I was going to say. So it's literally just a unit to review. There's no money changing hands, but just so you know. Now, this is a pen plotter. So you have an XY gantry and a z-axis that holds a pen and puts it to paper making lines. Um, it's good. Let me start right there. The 3.0 is a good unit. It's specifically better than the 2.0 uh, in a number of ways. It's really well built. The bed is very flat. Uh, there's no, no bowing or cupping even after months of use. If you looked at some axi draw plotters, you know, they have that design which is like an I-beam, so there's a, a beam running along one axis, and then the arm holding the pen is floating. That's very photogenic. It's great for making videos of your plots as you're plotting them, but really Una's design is more of an age, so you have two tracks and the, uh, the axis between them is fixed along both sides. And like it's in the way when you're taking videos, but really when it comes to the quality of the plot and quality of operation, it is very, very sturdy. It's always exactly where you want it, where it should be. The cable management on this unit is really good. It's significantly better again than the 2.0. The 2.0 had kind of a cable going upwards uh, and it would sometimes tangle a little bit and the 3.0 has it all neatly tucked away, very nicely done. Another difference here is that the Z axis or the Z axis as we call it in Canada, it's servo based, so you have very precise control. I can lower the pen by exactly half a millimeter, let's say, or one millimeter. It's not just pen down, pen up, but I can really modulate the height. And that matters because if, for example, you're, uh, you put in a paintbrush, then you can press the brush on the paper really firmly and make a thick line. And then you can actually lift it somewhat, making a thinner line. You can get all sorts of interesting effects with proper Z-axis control like this plotter has. Another thing is that it's also quiet. It doesn't, it's just not very loud. It's, you know, I, I have it on my desk as I work and I plot. I like to run my pen pretty slow. Um, I find that it makes for better quality lines, not because of the plotter. The plotter can go really fast, but the pens often do better on the, the pens and the paper I choose do better when run slow. But the point is it's really quiet. Like it doesn't get in the way, even if I'm running a long plot while I'm working, it's not distracting. Precision is extremely good. A lot of the fun in pen plotting is being very, very precise and repeatable. And this plotter does deliver. It goes as precise as like fractions of a millimeter. Not that I really needed that. But let's say you have a pen and you know that this pen uh, makes a 0 0.3 line millimeter. Like that's the thickness. And you should measure that, right? Not just what it says on the cap of the pen, but actually measure it. And you want to have a grid of lines that are offset precisely the width of the pen. You could do that with this plotter. It's, it's that accurate. The pen holder itself on the Z-axis is quite good. It's a tube, so if you have something really, really thick, like a very thick permanent marker or something, it may not fit in the tube, but if whatever you put in fits in the tube, you can grip it very securely. There's two thumb screws and you can really tighten them down and it's not going anywhere. I did have a couple of surprises, not necessarily bad one, but just things that were interesting. First, I guess, is the on-off button. It does have one. And you, I would kind of expect for it to turn the device off. But actually what uh, the on-off button does, at least on the unit I have, it turns off the motors. It turns off the servos. So there is a control board and that control board is always on. But the servos can be turned on or off. That's a really interesting feature because the control board doesn't actually know 
whether or not the servos are on. And what that means is that I can simulate a plot. The software I use, I use a software called CNCJS. I installed it on a Raspberry Pi and I don't use Una's own software. I'll get to that in a moment. But the software I use graphically shows me how the plot is going. You can see the point of the, of the pen basically as it runs through the G code, as it runs through my plot. And if I run the plot and turn the servos off, I get to see what exactly it would look like, what the pen would be doing basically in real time, but without putting pen to paper and without moving anything. So that's really interesting. As a result, it also means that the control board is always available. Uh, this matters to me with CNCJS because again, I have a Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi is always on and the plotter control board is always on and this is all web-based so I can really get to my unit from anywhere on the network and see how it's going and maybe send a job in or stop a job. It's just available. The other surprise here is that the plotter out of the box ships in landscape orientation, meaning the X axis is actually the long axis and the Y axis is the short one. Before I got it, I didn't realize that I was making the assumption that, you know, the X is always the short one and the Y is the long one because most of my plots are portrait mode, but uh, that's how this one works. It is possible to maybe, you know, to flip the, the motors around. When I have a video that shows how to do that in hardware, but the cables on my unit are a bit too short, so I didn't do that. Um, the cables internally are short. But, you know, whether you use it in landscape or in portrait, it's just a matter of rotating your plot 90 degrees. Touching on the servos and on, on maintaining the unit, it's easy to open up. You just turn it over. Uh, the, the shroud over the control unit is held with two screws. Really simple. And um, it seems repairable enough. Fortunately, I didn't have to repair it, but it looks like a solid unit that's going to work for a good long while. So all in all, I recommend this plotter. I think if you're on the fence between the 2.0 and the 3.0, I do think investing in the 3.0 is worth it. It's just a beautiful unit. And uh, yeah, that's been my experience using it. Thanks for watching.